about the, the one of the things that I mean we all see this is the players are changing. The traditional players are still there, but hey, all of a sudden Samsung is a lighting company uh, and a pretty powerful one. Do you think that the different viewpoints of all these companies that are well, essentially those who are new to lighting, mm -hmm. may result in change because they just look at things completely differently. Well, I don't think I don't agree that the the Samsungs, to the, the, all the uh, I don't necessarily name names, but all the foreign billion billion dollar conglomerates are coming here and necessarily eating anybody's lunch. I think your traditional lighting guys are the ones having the best the best success and long term sustainable viable success. Um, and in the end, it's I believe it's a channel dominated industry a lot more than it's a technology dominated industry. Again, as a lighting manufacturer, we actually use Samsung, okay, because Samsung makes some pretty decent uh, LED uh, uh, chips at this point, and they're uh, and they're very viable. And I'm sure there's other manufacturers here that can say the same. Um, if Samsung was to turn out to be our competitor and actually start manufacturing lighting fixtures, well, that would be a whole different story. But right now, it's more of a partnership. Hopefully that'll stay for many years to come. But one of the things I want to address, especially to the board here, let's take a look at where we are right now versus where we're going to be. Right now, as a manufacturer, if uh, I get a call from somebody in the field to tell me that they have a fixture out and they believe they have a bad ballast, okay, they are actually directed to call the ballast manufacturer. We give them their 800 number, the warranty's handled through the ballast manufacturer, there's a code on the back of the ballast. It's all taken care of outside of our realm. Okay, as the manufacturer that built the picture and assembled it and, uh, and put that product in it. When you start getting into these uh, LED technologies, okay, um, yes, they come with um, certain warranties that we pass through, five-year warranties on drivers, five-year warranty on boards, and so forth and so on. But as we all know, boards are very different. The, um, the chipsets are very different. The, uh, especially when you're dealing with lumen packages that have to do with a high bay type fixture versus a fixture that's going to be similar to over our head here, or it would be a basket fixture that has a much different lumen package. And the um, and going uh, to the realm of what you guys were talking about, it, it, it's I'm having trouble understanding how that will work. But as someone who manufactures a fixture, you are now responsible for taking what could be the very best components in the world and assembling them into a very reliable, uh, very of lighting of lighting efficient effective product you know whatever set of words there and but and you can mess it up so That's you, true. <laughs> you take the best chip and your thermals are wrong you can take a great driver so and, and all of a sudden you, you should be responsible but you just put all these parts together in a way that could either make them shine or really destroy them. Well, that's probably where DLC and other things come into play. It, it is, <laughs> and that's also one of the fears that the traditional lighting manufacturers have right now is that they're assembling these components. And as the components change and the suppliers change, and you mentioned electronics companies, do the large lighting companies want to be just assemblers? So what you're starting to see is a shift with some of the, the legacy lighting providers to making their own boards. Yes. You see a couple of them that actually manufacture chips right to the finished product. Um, drivers are manufactured by fixture manufacturers now as well. And I've seen a number of um, uh, uh, boards, electronic printed circuit boards, that have not only the LEDs on them, they have multiple sensors on them. You know, occupancy, daylight sensing, they also have uh, built into them feedback loops to tell you when your light levels are falling off and then they automatically change the uh, current to the LEDs to compensate for it, as you were mentioning, Howard. Um, that, those kind of changes could lead us to believe that the light fixture in the future will be more of an electrical component integrated into the building infrastructure as opposed to a metal box with a bunch of parts in it. That is true, and that is great news and, 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 and great improvement on, you know, on, on the LEDs. But the tendency always has been, and correct me if I'm wrong, that if a manufacturer starts to do that, it tends to be more proprietary. So it tends to make that fixture even more unique, which creates the additional problem down the line. For you? Absolutely, <laughs> but it's not me, it's the end user. No, you're yeah, right. No, it's you sure. know, it's the I end know, users are going to get yeah. stuck with this. Sure. The same thing as you're saying, integrating lighting fixture into the building structure, again, another problem. Now you've got this thing stuck in a wall someplace, and how many how many stairway lighting, that embedded stairway lighting, that I have to figure out how to replace? You know, I've got a concrete pool around there that's 
6.25 inches, all right, and I gotta find something that goes inside there because it's gonna be rotted away, okay? The company's not really gonna be found. Yeah, uh, and it's standardization is coming along uh, not just with the components, uh, whether it's uh, you know, Saga or, or EMA is, is very active at creating additional standards and as well as AIES, so that, that, that's happening. Uh, and, and you mentioned protocols. Um, one of the things we were ready to talk about certainly is, is uh, the protocol that we use for lighting control, which is uh, the DALI standard. And, and it is an IEC uh, uh, standard that um, I could go into more in detail on, but it, it uh, will drive uh, the control industry to a fairly common uh, uh, control methodology uh, that, that uh, today is a ballast driver kind of, of, of standard um, that, uh, I, I'll, I'll just, uh, if you look at this, the screen, uh, I'll, I'll put it up, that uh, this, this, what I'm showing up there is, is the, the uh, what, what is currently uh, the uh, IEC 62386, which is the uh, standard for the DALI protocol. And today, we have that standard used for ballasts and LED drivers and other low, low type controllers. If, if you look, at, it allows now for additional functionality, including color control, which we've talked about here, uh, emergency lighting operation, and, and really co will cover all the different light sources. Uh, but what isn't yet ratified is the actual control protocol. So today, manufacturers use Dolly ballasts in their systems, uh, and, and the ballasts are fairly standard. Uh, but, but all the different control systems, that, to your point, are, are unique to those companies or proprietary to any of those companies. But that's, that's what's going to change as well. Once the control portion of this uh, IEC standard is ratified, then everybody can build stuff that works in, in a similar fashion. So we're seeing that kind of shift. Jake? First of all, I didn't, and again, strictly my own opinion. Industries in transition and in disruption, like we've been in, make tons of mistakes. Um, so the, the drive towards pretty capital um, engineering intensive vertical integration from my own perspective is ultimately I think they'll be at the vestiture of that because I think we all talk about lighting as a whole but the luminaire business is dramatically different than the light source business than the control gear business and historically lighting fixtures have had open architecture exactly for what Charlie's talking about it's worked and if you're the guy who owns the building you don't necessarily want something completely proprietary because the building is going to be here for 25, 30 years. And somehow, some way, that fixture needs to be maintained, updated, etc. And as far as the manufacturing capabilities, one of the keys right now, as manufacturers, we're forced to be more and more and more flexible. Uh, hard tooling is going to be a thing of the past because of the fact that, you know, real long runs on things like uh, two by four standard troffers are just um, going to be a thing of the past unless somebody's just using those as an LED product. Um, but with all the new, um, with the open architecture and allowing us to do this, one of the things that we're also looking at, and I'm sure the industry is looking at, is 3D printing. You know, think about that technology because, again, to be able to produce something in a short amount of time and also to be able to make something that would be a component of a particular lighting fixture, whether it be a component of a box or something else, um, that whole technology is very new to every industry and a lot of people are looking at it and that's really a way of the future also and as far as uh, making yourself as flexible as possible. Oh, the, the residential thin. folks are going to love 3D printing because the custom home designers, the interior designers, the lighting specifiers who work in that area are going to be able to design <coughs> fixtures just for you. So Charlie, maybe they print that part that you're going to be looking for instead of <laughs> overnight. You just, maybe you'll you print your print. own part. This Mary Beth, and then we're going to go to a new topic. The there you go. <laughs> yeah, it, it, just, uh, just maybe to pose this question to the rest of the panel. But is there room for two different lighting models for products? You know, there's a set of products where everything's integrated together, and you you run them till end of life, whatever that means, and you throw it out, and you buy a new one. 
And then there's a model where you've got components and you've got replaceable uh, drivers, you've got replaceable LED uh, light engines, if you will, you've got replaceable optics. And you know, you start and you look at the products that are that are developed, and they're, they're kind of in both camps right now. Now, so we're creatures of habit. We tend not to want to throw anything out. Sure. We'd rather replace it, retrofit it. We well, we've all made them a lot of uh, money over the years retrofitting things and making them more efficient, making them better. So which way are LEDs, are they going to go? It's a very expensive fixture. You obviously don't want to throw it out. you got to be able to do something with this after it gets beyond its useful life because of light output based on color. But The, the uh, market will, will decide. <laughs> well, the market will ultimately decide which yeah. direction the industry goes. It, there's a good example right now, for example, in downlights. You can Get a downlight, very inexpensive can with a screw based socket or a GU24 socket, put in a screw based LED bulb, and that's state of the art technology. Probably more good engineering has gone into designing those products and just about anything else in LEDs. But you can also get a retrofit kit with a little trim with the driver, stick that up in there. Now, which is best? And the answer is either one. It depends on the application, it depends on what you're trying to do. The cost differential is substantial. But you know this gets worked out in the in the market. We are, as as we were saying over here, in a very messy phase right now, and it isn't clear. But choice is good, so we'll we'll let the market sort that out because it will sort it out eventually. I agree, Terry, and it is going to sort it out. And if we look at the projections from the DOE right now, it's going to be decades that we see this transition where we have both models. We see the new model perhaps emerging, the other one will be determined by the market whether it'll stay with the, the components that are assembled into traditional types of fixtures. One thing that we're seeing right now that's addressing the replacement issue, though, is some manufacturers have gone to the QR codes. So they have to change their products quickly. Like Howard said, we're not making the long runs of these products like we used to. It's not the same parts and pieces. You can't make the status quo product for years anymore with solid state. So with some type of identification that's easy to scan on the outside of the fixture, all of a sudden it identifies the products in that particular run to make your aftermarket work a lot easier. Randy, there's a number here that everybody's interested. We're in the industry, so we tend to kind of overthink and overstate the impact of LEDs. And I just got some numbers this past week. If you're talking about indoor luminaires, adoption rate of indoor luminaires to LEDs is still under 1%. Uh, and it's like half a percent, a little less than half a percent. Whereas if you talk to industry people, there was a survey, they think it's almost 1% now. So we tend to overstate what the impact is when the actual numbers are much less. And I think that's going to slow things down. Really? No, yeah, I, are, I, I totally agree. Um, the industry is focused on LEDs. Yeah. <coughs> Howard and I are on the progress report committee, and we saw almost 80% of the new products that were deemed significant to the art and science of lighting in this past year were LED related. But market penetration isn't anywhere close to that. Right. Uh, companies are gearing up to meet that demand. Projections from the DOE are that we will have about uh, just under 10% of the installed base of fixtures by 2015, the LEDs. But your look is, is <laughs> incredulous because California is saying that they're only 2% LEDs with their outdoor lights, which gives them the best return on investment. So global numbers that just came out of London show a 3% global market penetration for installed base of LED products. On one hand, everybody is betting the farm. There were no new fluorescent or metal halide luminaires submitted this year, zero. Everybody's betting the farm on solid state, but we haven't seen it 